Hi guys, welcome to Caternix Corner. So in this video, I wanted to uh, share with you a couple different techniques that I use when I am uh, breeding uh, my hens. Um, for the most part, a lot of people keep their roosters and their hens together in you know different coveys of, of different ratios, uh, like one to three, one to four, one to five. And I do that also. I have some cages that are set up in a, in a colony setup where I have, you know, say one rooster and five hens, and the rooster lives with those hens uh, basically for his entire breeding life. Uh, but I also have uh, cages where I'm doing, you know, specialty breeding projects and I don't keep the roosters in with the hens. What I do is I rotate the roosters out. That way I can use one rooster for multiple coveys. And um, real quick, quickly, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how I do that. Uh, right here, I have a, a couple uh, EB roosters. Uh, one is a Rosetta, the other is a Tibetan. And normally what I'll do is I'll take a rooster uh, he will be isolated in his own cage. We do call it the bachelor pad and I will remove the rooster from the bachelor pad and introduce him to the hens and I'll just sit back and watch him for a few minutes and usually within you know 15 to 20 minutes sometimes 30 minutes uh, the rooster has gone through and serviced all the hens in that cage at which time he can be pulled out and put back into his bachelor pad. Uh, sometimes if the rooster doesn't look like he's actually interested or doing his job right away, uh, I'll leave him in there for you know the entire day uh, just to make sure that he does service all the hens. Uh, but I will keep an eye on him to make sure you know that there is no issues with aggression. Uh, sometimes you can get that uh, if you have a a covey of nothing but hens. Um, you're going to have one dominant head and hen in there, and then when you introduce the male. Um, it usually doesn't happen right away, but once they settle down, the dominant hen can sometimes want to uh, become a little bit aggressive on the rooster. So another technique that I want to talk to you about, and we'll be demonstrating that today, is artificial insemination. Now I do have some birds um, that I want to introduce, like in this case the Tibetan. I am going to introduce him uh, with my jumbo hens. Uh, but because the hens are so large, uh, he has a hard time mounting them and actually inseminating them. Uh, so what I do is I do that you know, myself, I do that by hand. And we're gonna demonstrate that also. So let me go ahead, I'll bring the camera in and we're gonna go ahead and introduce this Rosetta male uh, to a pair of Egyptian hens and uh, let him go ahead and breed with them and uh, that way I can get some, you know, hatch out some scarlets. So let me grab the camera and we'll, we'll jump right into it. Okay, so in this cage I have a couple Egyptian hens. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and place the uh, Rosetta rooster in though with the hens. And as you can see, he is already going right at it. It only takes him a second or so uh, to you know, engage the hens, mount them and inseminate them. Uh, and that's the nice thing about this uh, technique is you don't have to you know leave him in there all day long for the most part he's going to want to you know engage the hens right away and and do his job so we'll leave him in there for a few more minutes and uh just to make sure that he is going to inseminate both hens he seems to have a favorite there right now he's he's really uh engaging this hen quite a bit uh, so we'll go ahead and leave him in there and then uh, I'm going to bring you over and show you how I artificially inseminate uh, the birds. Okay, so real quickly, um, what we're going to do is demonstrate how we artificially inseminate uh, these hens. Uh, here I have a couple of jumbo pharaohs, uh, which I'm going to be uh, inseminating with a Tibetan uh, rooster. Uh, and that way um, I can hopefully get some scarlet babies out of them. Uh, the reason I'm doing it with the jumbo hens is I'm trying to increase the size of the uh, scarlet line. Uh, so we'll take you know our best Tibetan rooster, introduce him to a couple nice size uh, feral hens, and hopefully increase that size just a little bit. So let me bring the camera in a little bit closer and we'll show you this technique. Okay, so hopefully you can see what's going on here. Uh, what we're going to do is grab our rooster, and if you look at the vent, of the rooster. Uh, you can see that there's like a swollen bulb right here just above the vent. Uh, that is where the foam is. 
uh, that the rooster uses to inseminate the hens. And basically what we're going to do, and I normally wear gloves when I'm doing this, is we're going to depress that bulb just slightly and you'll see some foam excrete from it. We'll take and we'll get that on our finger like this. Let me put this rooster back. And then we will grab one of our hens and basically doing the same thing. Uh, you're going to look at her vent and you're going to smear that over her vent. Now while you're doing that, you'll notice that that vent is kind of pulsating. What she's doing is, is actually drawing that foam up inside her vent. I hope you can see that okay. And uh, then we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other hand. So we'll grab our rooster again, depress the, the bulb. I wish I could do that where you guys could see. Depress that and we've got some more foam. We'll take our foam grab the other hen and repeat the process. You, you can see that vent kind of uh, pulsating in and out there. She is actually drawing that foam right up into her oviduct, I believe they call it. Um, but that is basically uh, how you do it. Let me get the camera set back up here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the artificial insemination portion. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back down here and remove the uh, Rosetta rooster uh, from the Egyptian cage. I'm pretty sure he's already serviced both ends. Uh, actually, he's servicing them right now. Uh, so I'm sure he's done his job with both hands and he can be uh, placed back into his little bachelor pad over here. So guys, I hope this gave you uh, a little bit of insight onto alternate breeding methods for your quail. Uh, like I say, I do keep you know some of my birds in coveys uh, where a male will spend you know most of his career in with his hens. But I also have setups where I like to be able to rotate an individual rooster around to different coveys, and uh, also I like to be able to artificially inseminate some hens which may be too large for the the rooster to you know mount and successfully inseminate them so guys i hope this helped you out uh, if you're not already subscribed to the channel uh, please do so it helps me out you can get notified of any new and upcoming videos so thanks again and we'll see you on the next one